Malcolm began to tell me about my teacher's personal life. And after he finished, he said, now, brother, I could get these sisters on the telephone and trick them and make them tell you that what I'm telling you is true. I said, no, brother, you don't have to do that. When he took me back to the airport, he said to me, brother, now I don't want you to tell anybody what I've told you. I said, no, I'm not going to tell anybody but the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I saw his shoulder jump. I went back to Boston. I couldn't sleep. Because sometimes when you learn information that you didn't know, that has a tendency to shake your faith some, yeah. <coughs> it keeps you up. I could not sleep that night, and five o'clock the next morning, as that's our time for prayer, Brother Malcolm called me. He said, Brother Lewis, I want you to delay the letter that you are going to write to give me a chance to write a letter to explain what I said and why. I said, brother, it's going to take me some time to get my head together to write such a letter. So if you can get your letter off in that time, fine. I do not want to be put in between two powerful men. He said, well, there's only one powerful man I said, I'm aware of that, but I'm also aware that your relationship with me and mine with you and him would be troubled. Malcolm wrote his letter, and mine came after his letter, and he was summoned to Arizona to answer his teacher. Now, that was a very difficult period in the nation's life because most of you have girlfriends that you don't legitimize them as wives. Not, I'm not talking to you yeah. personally. Yeah. But most men have women on the side, but they don't accept the responsibility of procreation. Elijah Muhammad married these women. They produced for him children. Now what you don't know, and you're going to have to face it, women are outnumbering men today from 7 to 11 to 1. And women today lose as a commodity because there's more than the demand. The demand is on the man because he's less, she's more in terms of numbers. So women are played. But one day, we're going to have to think over what polygamy is. Uh -huh. It's not the best solution, but when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, went to war, many men lost their lives and left their wives as, and their children sometimes as often. So the Quran permitted the Muslim male to have up to four wives under that circumstance. Elijah Muhammad taught us against fornication <clears throat> and adultery. So naturally, 
if he is taking wives, all of us that follow him that had girlfriends before we met him, it might trigger us to go back into fornication and adultery. I defended Elijah Muhammad. I did not defend Malcolm. I was angry with him because Elijah Muhammad took Brother Malcolm from prison. A brilliant man, potentially, but doing criminal things. And when Elijah Muhammad, when he became a follower of Elijah Muhammad and came out of prison, I know the NAACP wouldn't use him, nor would the Urban League, because Malcolm only had an eighth grade education. Uh -huh. But after Elijah Muhammad taught him, that man became a giant. So it would seem to me that regardless to what you felt about your teacher, why would you try to destroy a movement that gave you life because your teacher disciplined you? And that's where we fell out. Yeah. But those actions question his faith, all right? Yes. Okay. And naturally, then, when your faith is shaken, uh -huh. you do what you think you should do. But most of the people don't know that Malcolm tried to get back into the nation before he was assassinated. Really? So why would he come back? If your faith was broken, why would you come back? It's because he realized the nation made Malcolm, and Malcolm helped to make the nation. And one year, two years, outside of the nation, he was wandering, not quite sure where he wanted to go. He was a black nationalist, and then he became an orthodox Muslim. We fell out, and I can't take that back. Mm -hmm because he taught me how to defend my teacher. And I went to him and showed him what I knew and found in the Quran about the domestic life of my teacher. And Malcolm said to me, I already know that, brother. You can't handle that. I'll handle that, fine. But he mishandled it. And he made the teacher to look bad when he could have defended the teacher just by using the knowledge of the Quran. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, it led to a back and forth. Like a husband and wife break apart the children are watching a drama, and sometimes the drama gets so tense that one parent will attack another parent to get the children on their side and vice versa. That's the decision that I had to make over a man that inspired my Islamic life and the teacher of my Islamic life. I could not follow Brother Malcolm. Uh -huh. I had to follow the teacher who taught us both. Time and circumstances now brought my brother to an assassination. There's a hell of a climate. You can't leave the FBI out of this. You can't leave the U.S. government out of this. They plotted to divide Malcolm from his teacher and create the circumstances that led to his assassination. 
and in the freedom of information act <clears throat> you can find all of this that the government was involved in malcolm went to egypt and was poisoned in egypt we were not there when he went to france and france wouldn't let him in he took the uh, um, the money of uh, de gaulle with that had de gaulle's picture on it and threw it on the ground he knew that de gaulle did not want him assassinated on french soil we're not over there it's bigger than the nation of islam we had differences yes and some from the nation were charged with killing him and did 26 years to life and they were innocent the one that was guilty did the time and then he came out and he named all those who were involved in that action with himself mm -hmm. these are records that you can get there there in the court with consular and and others now i want to say this in closing this you know betty of course and i we were at odds but then the FBI came to my door and told me that we're going to announce somebody was trying is trying to assassinate you, Farrakhan, and we're going to make the announcement at 11 o'clock or something. When the announcement came out, they said it was Kabila. Shabazz, who had paid some little white boy a little bit of money, and he was to assassinate Louis Farrakhan. Now these are things you can get, it's, it's public record. Yeah. I didn't let the FBI put that mess over on me and on us. We had a press conference. And I took the side of Kubila and Betty that they were set up to create a problem between the nationalist community and the nation of Islam. So Betty and I then stood together and at the Apollo Theater, we raised money to help Kubila out of that situation. And finally, the government dropped the case. Mm -hmm. And now they're not going to tell you what Farrakhan did to start to bridge that gap. That night at the Apollo Theater, I used the term Brother Malcolm. And Betty said, I hope that you will continue to see him as Brother Malcolm something like that. And when you hear me talk, mention his name, I say, Brother Malcolm, time heals wounds. There are some wounds that time won't heal, but I know that time will heal this wound because now there's Kobila, there's Alyasha, they're the twins. That's a beautiful family. And you think about Malik Shabazz or Malcolm Shabazz, the only male member that represents Malcolm X killed in Mexico. The FBI arrested that brother because he was going to Iran to a conference. The government has never stopped trying to harm both the nation and the Shabazz family. So today, I don't say that we're friends, but I do say that we're better than we were 20 years ago. And I want to say to all of you who think that 
Farrakhan did something to murder Malcolm or was a part of it, don't you know that as much as this enemy hates me, that if they had any evidence that I was a part of a conspiracy to murder Brother Malcolm, I wouldn't be here with this brother now. I'd be in some prison cell and they wouldn't have to be afraid of the truth coming out of my mouth because they would have silenced me behind prison bars. So, you know, I have nothing to do with that. And I would hope that you would be intelligent enough to know that the enemy is still working. Today, Louis Farrakhan is the voice that Malcolm was. Mm -hmm. Do you think they don't want me silenced? Well, soon it'll be my turn because they're trying to find some way to arrest me or have some silly person think that they should kill me. And that's out there too. Mm -hmm. you, you, you received death threats? Well, if I did, I, I don't know it. Mm -hmm. They're saying that the government dropped the case before the Apollo. Yes, they did. That's what made the Apollo so strong. But I, I mentioned that it was after the Apollo? No. I didn't say that they stopped it after the Apollo. They stopped it, period. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's a matter of fact. Well, why did the government back out? If they thought they had something, why didn't they continue? See, when Because we didn't play into the plot. And that's why they lost. So I'm saying this to you, brother. Um, it's a question that I don't mind answering, uh -huh. you know. But no matter what mistake I believe Malcolm made, he died that I might live. Because he made a mistake that I learned from. When I split with Wallace D. Muhammad, you never heard me say one negative word about that man because they were the institution. I was just an individual. Uh -huh. But Allah has made me an institution now. So in the end, I'll be the winner. I don't care what the government says. I'm the winner now and I'll be the winner in the end. And you know what? I call him Brother Malcolm because even though he's dead, he's bringing more people to Islam in death uh -huh. than some of these living ones <laughs> cannot do. And the thing that has made Malcolm, it's not an accident. Did you ever read the 11 daily newspapers after Brother Malcolm was assassinated? No, I didn't read them. Did you know that every paper in New York rejoiced at the murder of Brother Malcolm? Go back and look. They tried to make a movie on Brother Malcolm and members of the Jewish community would not finance it or let it come out. Did you know that Brother Malcolm was by the ADL the number one anti-Semite when he was killed? Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. Did you know that that's what I am now to them? Do they love me? No, sir. I'm asking you a question. No, sir. No, sir. Why don't they love me? Because I expose them. Right. Malcolm exposed them as the architects of all the civil rights organizations. They were behind them, giving them money. And you know what the theme was? Non-economic liberalism. 
that none of these organizations, CORE, SNCC, NAACP, could involve themselves in economic development because economic development would take money out of the hands of the Jewish people that funded civil rights. Man, you got to look deep at what's going on today. Don't be no surface people. But we are the winners. I want to thank you, though, for the question. Uh -huh. Because it's one of the most painful episodes in my life and one of the most painful episodes in the life of the Nation of Islam. But I pray that over time, these wounds in her family and in Mr. Muhammad's family and in my family would be healed. My children and Malcolm's <laughs> children have a friendship. Dr. King's children are in problems with each other because these men, King, Dr. King and Brother Malcolm, the enemy does not want their children to continue the legacy of their father. So they work to break families. I pray that if and when my time comes, that my family will be strong and together to continue the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Now, Dr. Kissinger wrote a policy memo that the planet had seven billion people now, but resources were dwindling and something had to be done about the population. That memo started becoming policy now where two to three billion people were to be culled from our planet. Do you know what culled means? What does that mean? You know how you have a, a flock of chickens and they have some disease? They cull the crop by killing as many of those chickens so that they can stop the spread of the disease. The policy of the government became killing two to three billion human beings. That policy was given first to the uh, agriculture, uh -huh. food and drug, military. How did these people conspire to kill two to three billion people? Have you checked the food that we're eating now? Do you know what is happening to the quality of food? And this is being orchestrated under the government? Did you know that the government who has the most atomic weapons has the most atomic waste? And the atomic waste used to be buried in the ocean or in areas in Africa, but then they decided to use depleted uranium in bullets, in bombs, etc. When they dropped these bombs in Iraq, the depleted uranium poisons the air, the water, the life that's coming up out of the ground. So the soldiers that served several tours of duty, they come back home and they're sick. Uh -huh. This is being done not only there, 
but all over the world. Food, vaccines, pharmaceuticals, education, all of these things are working in concert to make us objects of death, objects of destruction. And if you look at the health condition of black people, we lead in every field of disease. Cancer was once a white man's disease, and now cancer is killing us in great numbers, AIDS. Now Ebola overseas coming this way. We are really under attack, brother. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can win is to separate from an enemy like this on some earth that we can call our own and develop the means of sustaining our lives. I thank you for allowing me this privilege, Brother Sway, and I thank your team. How long have I been here? Long time. Hour, hour 46 minutes. Oh, that's it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it.